Welcome back to another episode of this next record. It's your boy Blacksby, and today we are talking about two of the worst movies to come out back to back: Megalopolis and Joker 2, aka Joker Folia. Do let's get right into it. Sinestro Corp, the cast, it's your weekly gold mine. Stay tuned in, stay tuned. Never get tired of that theme song. Welcome back, y'all. It is our 100th episode, and we are talking two of the worst, two of the most diabolical, two of the most abysmal movies I've ever <laughs> been alerted of their existence in my entire fucking life. Mind you, Madam Web came out this year, and I watched Ooh, this. Yeah, that's crazy. What a, how, what a year for how the comic book fuck movies. is Madam Web better than these two movies? Anyways, let's get right into it because my blood pressure already getting up there. I had to wear the sleeveless shirt so I don't rip my shirt up. Uh, but let's go. Uh, starting at the top, Megalopolis, bro. Let's start with 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 the alleged Look. cinema, the alleged Francis Ford Coppola, a mas- mas- master of Look. cinema. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I explain the story real quick from yes, what please, I have gathered? If, if I do film? it, I'm not. It's not okay. going to be legible. So, so this film is uh, for those of you who don't know a masterpiece by Martin Scorsese, who you may know from such things as the cinema meme on Twitter. And my God, it, yeah. it's it's about a builder guy. Don't lie to these has folks, the power- bro. What is it? You Scorsese? said Martin Scorsese, not Scorsese dumbass. No, Who is you think it? Martin? You it's think Martin? Go- you think Martin would put some yeah. dog shit like this? Martin out? still has it. Martin may have Alzheimer's. He he it's one of the old well. niggas. Coppola. Yeah, yes. Coppola. That, that I no, knew it was one of those fraud. old niggas. Look, Francis all right. So scratch what I said earlier. It's by Francis Ford F one fifty Coppola, and he <laughs> tells a story of a guy who is a creator who exists in a version of New York that is sometimes ancient Rome for no reason. And he has the power to stop time, but he also doesn't uh, because like it happens, but it also doesn't. And it's, it's him trying to build a really cool city. It it sounds like it should be a movie that you would want to watch. It is not that. (laughs) It's like, it's like Bioshock was written by a senile Man with too much money and a theater degree. degree. It's and, like and, a nigga and, and, and a half finished film insane. degree. It's like it, somebody it, said it, they want to make um like a movie about ancient Rome, and they said let's yeah. modernize that shit. Let's put it in oh. New York. Oh my god! Let's see what you know we what can it reminds do with me that. Of? It's it so bad. Me- it's like a pretentious version of that Romeo and Juliet. That's I was about to say yes. It's the like that, but mm-hmm. bad. Yeah, it's Real like that, bad. bad. Like it's Horrible. it it the the whole movie has the energy of like you're invited by one of your college friends to a one man show that you don't realize until you're there that you should have just stayed home. It feels like that. <laughs> like like it's 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 amazing. It has an all star cast. It has Giancarlo Esposito, Aubrey Plaza, Adam Driver, like even Shia LaBeouf, as weird and terrible as he is, amazing. Yeah. Right? Adam Driver, eh. but but what I don't understand is like it has the '97 bulls of casting, but it plays like the pre Kawhi Raptors, and it just really bums me out. Jesus, it's valid. It's, it, it it's is a beautiful analogy. It, He's talking how, about the the Raptors before Kawhi, but after uh, Vince Carter. Yeah, yeah, like like that gray spot area. It's like it's like the Oakland Raiders of cinema. It's truly mm. just abhorrent um it's I, I i it's hard to articulate how a film can come across like so like pretentious and like high up its own ass but the entire movie like even the dialogue is like this pseudo shakespearean nonsense that mm-hmm. makes the story kind of hard to follow and there's like a lot of narration that keeps on happening every few seconds from Lawrence Fishburne's character. Which as doesn't a- make any fucking sense. Y'all it, just don't get it, bro. It just doesn't have the whole movie doesn't make sense. Like the opening scene is pretty cool. He's on top of the Empire State Building and he uses um Zawaru or whatever fucking JoJo Stania is powered by. But like he pauses his, his quirk, his quirk from my hero is fucking 
Yeah, it's time, time stop, stop. stop. Stop mentioning now, fucking cartoons. Don't. Now I'm ninja. I'm ninja art. Time <laughs> stop jutsu. <laughs> ass nigga. That I, shit was just so, bro. God. It's, I tried. I tried so hard to watch this movie. I I really did. But like, I fell asleep. I want to say mm-hmm. 20, 20 minute, 20 to 30 minutes in, I believe, is how long it took for me to fall asleep. And it just, it's it's just not entertaining. It doesn't grab you in any way. It's not compelling. It's a waste of talent for almost every actor in here. Like, I, they've clearly been in something better than this. Oh, yeah. It's, That's the crazy part, too. You have, like you said, you have Giancarlo Esposito, one of the best actors on television and film yeah, like he's uh, he's great what the hell is this why are you here this is a check this is a, a paycheck check. and he gets to watch like francis ford coppola like slowly like recede into his own mind mm. he gets to see that it's an experiment for him no don't experiment that bro this ain't bill not a science guy first of all this movie was allegedly in the making since 1983. How the fuck do you have like 41 years to work on something and it turns out ass? I'd be oh making, I'd be typing the scripts for these podcasts 30 minutes before and we cook out bangers, <laughs> bro. Not even 30 minutes. I didn't even type one today. I just, I loaded that shit. Just bangers. You had 41 years to make a movie, brother, and that shit was ass? Don't ever make another film again. I don't care who you are. What's your oh name? my god! Bro, retire. Never. Let him retire. This retire. also, this also may be the biggest box office bomb of it the is. year because holy I think shit! It, is. it 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 was a budget of one hundred and twenty one million dollars. If you mm-hmm. double that for marketing, it is a two hundred and forty million. Uh, and and I, I, I'm going to assume like, like of his own fucking money. This man and it's of his own money. This is, broke, this, yeah. is, this is this is Coppola's own bread he put forth, and it has. Worldwide, mind you, this is million. this is all seven continents 90 coming million. together, they, and this shit million. has made eight point seven million dollars. Eight point seven million. Holy fucking eight, like, shit! One like one two like three, like four, eight five, like six, the seven, eight. Eight. number eight, not eighty. I, I eight. need. I'm going to double check this in case Google is wrong, mm-hmm. but like that is that is that is. Oh my god! It's that is over. The worst. It's over. He's done. Dude. He's done. Dude, no, no, legit. Oh my god, that's. Oh my god, he's not beating. It is he's not only beating the fraud allegations. Coppola is, is going to be homeless <laughs> after this, man. He put his house on this shit. <laughs> he's like, he's like a gambler who can't stop. He's done. <laughs> it opened to four million dollars. Like that's. He's gonna get uh, that. He's gonna get that letter from the bank, and his house is gonna get yeeted into space. Cause that shit can't be paid off now. That boy can that shit getting repossessed. Uh, all of it. Gonna turn that bitch down to make a Jamba Juice. <laughs> it's it's a oh they're gonna open a, wow open that's a, hilarious. Gonna open a Dairy Queen where his house used to stand. Guess where? Gotta, guess where? He's gonna work in it for free to pay off the debt. <laughs> Actually, he's gonna pay them so he can work there. He's gonna be at the drive-through, like you know, I. I made I made a movie. I'm I made Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Nick Cage is my nephew, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, just put the fries in the no, bag, wait, I'm bro. thinking of someone else. No, no. All in all, I know is we're, that we're, we're. It is him, I think. It is him, yeah. No, I know we're I know we're joking about everything, but like this legit one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Um, it's frustrating that it was three hours long. I had more fun in Madam Web. It's actually two hours and ten minutes, believe it or not. It just feels it was three two hours, hours and forty four <laughs> minutes. I counted every second. That shit was <laughs> ass cheeks. Um, He's including the trailers. <laughs> and then also, you know, what's crazy is like a month or so ago, we talked about Trap. Trap sucked. It was hard to watch, but I made it through, and I wasn't. I wasn't. Towards the end, it got a little bit better. <clears throat> this yeah. movie, I was like, there's no redeeming qualities. Nothing can save this film. It was like, bad from beginning to end. You you would think with like a visionary director like Coppola, it would mm. at least be shot in interesting ways. And there's a handful of shots that are cool, right? Like when he does time stop as they're demolishing that building, it was cool. Yeah, that's right? it right there. Honestly, they should have kept going with that. Yeah, honestly, that that's like few and far between. I feel like if they focused more so on like 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 like, like this is just me rewriting the movie. Right, <laughs> give give Caesar the guy. Right, mm-hmm. uh, make him, make him, yeah, make him make him have some kind of like terminal disease. Right, like he's a man on borrowed time. 
and he wishes that he had more of it to complete his vision for this great city, right? Mm -hmm. And and that could play on the, te the theme of like trying to save more time, and you wouldn't need all these Hold extra on. fucking characters. I would Hold like on. it if it was just he does, he before, does before you continue. Disease. Before you continue, Az, this is a disclaimer. Francis Ford Coppola, you cannot co-op this idea. This is now copyright. If you steal oh, this, yeah. you owe us royalties. Let Az cook. If you, if yeah. you take this he idea, can't pay you royalties, pay bro. Us. That man's in fucking debt. He's gonna be performing Honestly. in Las Vegas like Bruno Mart, like Bruno Honestly, for the man, rest I, of his fucking I, life. I feel like I feel like right now Daniel Caesar and Coppola have the same amount of money. Like that's not good. <laughs> Thirty-seven dollars in the Happy Meal that's coupon. Insane. On God, I feel like I feel like you know what? I feel like if I brought this script to him, he'd make it for like a hot meal and a firm handshake. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is just he, he's, incredible. He's, it's not for the money; it's for the friends he makes along the way. I've just I've just never seen a film bomb as hard as this. Like we we've, we've had a you, year of cinema for like just shit movies. We've had Madam Web, we've had Trap, we've had Harold and Harold and the Purple. Oh, God, I forgot about that one. We've had <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Bro. Everyone did. That's why he's a fucking shill now. Man. And now, <laughs> and now, writer. now we have <laughs> like it. I I think it's weird because the slump of cinema usually happens in like January where they'll just release like some yeah. box office dog shit. Or but like this March, late in the game, especially bullshit. around the holiday season, that's mm -hmm. impressive. That's impressive. And that's you know what's crazy about October or Astober, like we said in the chat. There's other movies <laughs> coming out this month that are just also not good. So it's like you're competing for a worst film of the month and worst film of the year at that point. Venom three comes out this month, by the way. I completely forgot. And then I, oh, I saw this. Man. I saw this big ass poster outside my apartment. I was like, nah. Nah. However, I can. I am willing to bet that Venom Three was much more fun than this film. Much better than than Mega. Yeah. I I. I think the best performance in this movie was probably from like. I don't even know, bro. Jason Schwartz. Maybe Shia LaBeouf. Maybe Shia LaBeouf. Ooh. The oh, the, the shaven eyebrow freak. And that's like because he was he has a, a weird character that was all over the place. Everybody else, they're supposed to be one role. Like the line delivery is so bad. Mm -hmm. Whenever they're going back, that one scene, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, between Nat Natalie Emmanuel and uh, Adam Driver. Oh, that was I don't give right. my time. I don't give my time to entitled entitle me entitles me. I'm like, come on, girl, you on Game of Thrones? Also, oh, don't man, do that. it also, feels it don't feels do like that. you're watching a fucking high school play. Not even really like the <laughs> freshest fucking like people who have never acted it before in their life, and which is crazy. It's also because, because it's got some really yeah, seasoned fucking talented. actors. Yeah, yeah, and like it just the whole film's dialogue it feels poorly delivered and poorly acted because so it's choppy. Not natural. There's no there's no finesse to it. It's not even like regal natural like it would feel like in the the, the same comparison that me and Matt made earlier with the old school Leonardo DiCaprio Romeo and Juliet. That's like very fancy, pretentious dialogue, very theatrical, very flamboyant dialogue. But they deliver it and act it so naturally because mm -hmm. there feels like there's a pace to the conversation, a, a cadence, a natural flow, a rhythm. You can kind of infer how the character it's is supposed a good to act. Writer, that's that's Shakespeare, bro. That boy said, yeah. fetch, he said, fetch my, long sword, "Fetch my longsword, fetch my longsword, whole." I was like, "All right, cool." They they got bars mm -hmm. in this film, and then here comes Adam Driver's goofy ass. To be or not to be. Shut the fuck up. To go to the club that. or not to go to the club. You go back to the club. It, what it, was it, that? It, what did you mean by that, Adam? Are you still in your Black Klansman character? Time out. We got to investigate this man. I didn't find one Don part Johnson. funny. I didn't find one part <laughs> funny because I'm not sure if there's any actual like jokes in this movie. But I did not, find one thing funny. The movie is when they're showing that, uh, that one actor. I forgot who he is, but he's the richest man of all time. That guy, John Voight, also John Voight, racist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when they were showing the him, right, they had this little counter at the bottom. Racism. Said uh, millions per sec for per minute or oh whatever. Like that's how much money he's made. Like, and it kept on going up to like this ridiculous number to where like this little like tag bar we have at the bottom of the screen. It was like the whole thing, and it wasn't even filling up the screen. Like it just kept going, and I thought that was funny. I thought that was funny. That was it. And I don't even think that was meant to be a joke. Like, if I feel like had, that was if he had made it a comedy, comedy, it might have succeeded. On wealth. 
If he no, if he made this a comedy, I would have been like, yeah, this is the Big Bang Theory of comedy. This, this is... could have been like a new movie four to three. We would have known it'd be dog shit, but we know why the actors are there. It's because it's blackmailed. Yeah. Uh, so, oh it's, my god, it's so bad. I don't think I have anything else to say about this movie. I'm be honest. Like I, I have, have nothing, nothing positive to I say. Nothing positive. It. We'll go with ratings real quick. But all I know is I gave it. The only reason why I gave it a two was because of the cast. That's it. Just the ca- if you're going off that the cast, just by that. name alone, that's the only reason why I gave it a two. But if you go off everything else, this movie is like a one, a one. Even a one is too generous. Point five. Point five. So I feel like I know why the line delivery was so off. It's because a lot of this movie was improvised by the cast themselves. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Topola just let them do whatever and it just it didn't work. This isn't the kind it's of movie problem, where you can bro. improvise. You gotta be a director. You gotta direct these, you gotta direct niggas, bro. Yeah, you gotta you bother writing the do. fucking movie, man. You telling me after four decades you couldn't have an idea? That's Anything? what I'm saying. Bro, anything I, I wrote papers, I wrote term papers the day before, and I got an A. Like, bro, wrote this movie you, for 40 years, and it's that took, like, like a fourth as long, or even half as long. Avatar, James Cameron's Megalopolis. That shit fucks. <laughs> Avatar is good. You can see 20 years worth of effort in mm-hmm. that. So yeah, you can, for you double can that amount of time, I, I, exactly. And this passion project. This is more hollow than a fucking bleach enemy. I'm genuinely like getting movie, angry bro. thinking about it. Like it's 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 abysmal. I the want to give this movie, movie honest. Like one. This might be my first zero. This, this is a zero. I, oh, I didn't even finish. Nah, this, movie. this is zero, bro. I can't think of a like like everything that I think of as a positive. Like the closest thing I can think of is the cast. And for you to have this level of talent and to waste it, to squander it to this degree. Zero. Like, this is dog shit. Eight million dollars worldwide worth of dog shit. It's not good. I mean, if this, if, if you think about it, if this podcast, once, actually not if, when this podcast blows up, I'm, I will guarantee that we will make more money than this film. Eventually. A thousand. <laughs> it, won't, it won't take us 41 years. It won't take us 41 years, too. It'll take us, like, maybe four. Some shit like that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know her. I know her. Auto, you haven't seen it yet, but what's your 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 feel for it? Your rating? I'm uh, I'm not given... excited. About, I'm not excited about. I'll give it like a a hype meter. Um, I've seen clips, I've seen reviews, and this is looking like a one. Like I'm not. I am. <laughs> I I'm fearing the moment that I step into this theater. I know that I'm gonna have to be fucking hammered to even sit through it. <laughs> And I don't know if I can drive like that, man. I don't know if I can do this to myself. <laughs> you before the movie, I had one beer. I had two beers. Two beers. I had three, three beers. beers. All the way up to nine, throwing a bloody, and a Mary, bloody Mary. Turn the fucking car on and drive home and hope I make this it. This is a stone cold episode. <laughs> stone cold. Stone cold Steve Gerardo. Stone cold. Stone cold Sinestro Core. <laughs> Nah, yeah, that was one of the worst films out. Um, do not go watch it. Usually, we support all forms of not cinema, watch it. But watch do it. not watch it. Do not watch hammered, it. Go watch it. Go, yeah. pa- go. Get, uh, get really fucking plastered and just like you got to get, get the kind of, Yeah, yeah, definitely get an Uber. Definitely get it. You're you're Please. not making it home. Pay one Uber. of the movie theater workers twenty bucks to drive you home. Yeah, and get hammered. Yeah. Yeah, Sneak in a like, bottle of Mad Dog to, and go watch this movie. You got to get like NASCAR viewer level drunk to enjoy this. Like you, you need the blood alcohol content of like thirty first aid kits. Like I, that's, I don't see anything. That's fucking. I don't see it the other way. I see it the other way, man. You said you need alcohol poisoning to sit through this bitch. Hey, genuinely, hey, because the DMC release of death, that hallucination will give you a better movie experience. Streets, streets saying that Aaron Pierre got cast as the Green Lantern for real. Man, for our viewers, that Where? news was in the group chat seven hours ago. Matt does not read it. Yeah, this is my is this is my <laughs> my agenda has failed, bro. Yeah, this is the Who's first time my out? agenda has failed, huh? Who's left Blue Marvel? Is that, bro, is niggas don't know. I still got so many Black roles. Lightning. And Blue I'm Marvel, gonna be Tobias. Black Lightning. Put me on Bishop. I'm in there. Bro, mm-hmm. y'all know. I would say Black for Black Panther, but now nah, that role is too too big of a shoes to fill. We gotta let that's that one. Nah. You're just 
But yeah, we gotta leave it to Ryan Gosling. Gosling. We need a real Gosling actor Gosling in there. So heavy. Uh, you're gonna end up playing Put like fucking Ryan like, 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 Jacobs from the Daily Bugle. Ah, oh, hell no. <laughs> I'll be yeah, Perry like, White. Robbie. <laughs> yeah. Perry. Robbie, Ro- Robbie, Robbie Robertson. Robbie Robertson. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be Robbie, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I see the vision. Nah, Perry, Perry White already got cast, so that's that role's gone too. I can't have mm, shit, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of can't have shit, can't have another fucking good movie. Joker Folly Ado came out and it's not good. It's not good. That was see, that's what bro. Banger, banger transitions, that's banger content. I, How can you Ford could not do that if you gave him a hundred and twenty fucking million dollars? He squandered that. If shit. you had a gun to the head of every family member and loved one he's ever had, that man would still not be able to formulate also, anything we resembling. We should point out pull he's the trigger. I hear the divorce is incoming because he just wasted all their money on this. She's not getting any alimony. She's going to high five. <laughs> I don't even think he can afford all five figures. Maybe just three. Beautiful. Just... <laughs> but, uh, not yet. Speaking... Joker, bro. Oh, bro. God, Let's talk right, about film. I... So let me can preface. Let me preface. I haven't seen mm-hmm. this yet. Will I see it? Probably not. I got better things to do, like work. <laughs> yes, I'd Am rather I... go to work than watch this film. <laughs> Am I the only one who suffered? Yes, you I'm are. The only you one. are. This is all you're you the only one who did it to yourself. Please. All let right. Us know so, so, why would those you watch of you who haven't seen it, close your eyes and let me regale you with the tale that is Joker Two. All right. It's been approximately two, three, a number of years after the first Joker. The first Joker like, happened, and he did a like, big crime. Like, like seven, Coalition. seven years. Seven years. Did that come out twenty seventeen or was it twenty nineteen? No, twenty nineteen. Oh, that's it's five years. My bad, I can't do it. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been about five years or so. It feels since like we seven. had the last Joker movie. So let's check in on our good boy Arthur Fleck. This is the story of him going on trial for uh, the big murder, which everyone saw him do because it was on national television in front of a live audience with millions of witnesses but for some reason um there's a trial uh and they're trying to prove that he's either really the one responsible for it or they're going with an insanity defense saying that joker is a dual personality and along the way while he's in arkham asylum he meets lee who is harley quinn aka lady gaga and 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 he and her sing together to bond and it goes through the ins and outs of the trial. That's that's the plot. Joker goes to court. Joker goes to court. Um. So 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 it's so Law and Order off, Gotham City. That's what it is. Law and Order Gotham. Essentially, essentially, but uh, take all the engaging subplots and likable characters and take them out. Now, here's a quick little comparison. Right, the first Joker sits at a sixty-eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes and an eight point four out of ten. I like the first Joker. I don't think it's revolutionary or anything. It's basically just taxi driver with juggalo face paint. It's not fucking good. good. It's serviceable. It's not a comic book movie. It's just kind of okay. Critically, it did rather well. It also made quite a bit of money. Box office wise, it made, oh my God, it made a billion dollars. It made a billion dollars, right? And that's off of a pretty condensed budget all things considered now joker 2 joker 2 is is very neat very interesting and very fantastic because not only did it not make anywhere close to that so far but it has a 33 percent on rotten tomatoes and a 45 percent on metacritic along with a 200 million dollar budget of which it has only made let me just uh really quick uh view this 40 last I have to make sure. 40 i think let me see oh where's frank when you need him (laughs) it's made 39 million dollars wow it's half of what it made in three days for the first one and also it cost more than three times to make than the first oh my god it doesn't show it doesn't show the majority of this money feels like it was spent on Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix. And you would think that, oh, I didn't know this was a musical. 
Yeah, you wouldn't. You know why? Because they didn't market it like, at all. Marketing the they didn't market it at all. That's because Fired. Todd Phillips knew that he fucked up, and he like went out and said, "Nah, it's not, it's not really a musical." But how many musical numbers were there? All of seventeen. <laughs> so to put this into perspective, right? The first Joker is roughly about like two hours or something. This is an hour extra, and that hour extra is only, in in my opinion. Filled with like the padding that is the musical numbers. The musical numbers don't add anything. They don't get across any real emotions or feelings. They don't really enhance anything unique with visuals. They don't have any razzle dazzle to them, right? You look at other straight up musicals. Uh, you look at things like La La Land or Tick Tick Boom, right? Those Valid. songs tell Valid. a story. There's a purpose to them. There's a narrative weight to those. They don't feel like they're just padding out sections of the film right? There's dynamic shots to them. They're entertaining. Save for, like, two numbers in this entire fucking thing. The rest is shot like a fucking cardboard cutout. It, it doesn't have any real interesting things to it. And also, oh my Not god. Like a Nexapro oh my god. <laughs> so, so, as to where Not the first good. movie showing you what happens if a guy who's mentally ill is shunned by society and has a mental break. This movie takes that Elon Musk and instead decides to not only be like, no, this is a bad man. This is outright a bad man. This victimized guy is actually bad, but they proceed to victimize him even more. So you're not even really like feeling sorry for him. You're more so just getting annoyed with how much of like a woe is me, low cow pity party they're making for this nigga. It's like watching Boogie in clown makeup. Like it doesn't feel actually entertaining. At one point, and this is a uh, trigger warning for anybody who uh, has to deal with sexual assault or has to like face that, this is this is actually a thing that happens in the movie. So you've been warned. Skip maybe like five, ten seconds ahead. But um, they raped the Joker out of him in this movie, and I'm not joking. It is it is an implied sexual assault scene that happens. Basically, he makes fun of the guards uh, and. He gets dragged into the showers, and there's like a wall that hides it, but it cuts. And he, while they have him like pinned down, you can see like they're doing stuff. And then it cuts to what are they doing? Him, no pants. Stop. Um, looking like really defeated, beat up, and disheveled, and like really sweaty. And and at that point, he just loses the will to be the Joker anymore. Um. For, for for some reason, I I do not know why in Arthur Fleck's already tragic life they had to throw this on there, but it it just feels like it doesn't add anything narratively. It just feels like shock value for the sake of shock value. Uh -huh. And if you look at other films where like sexual assault or like these horrible things happen, right? They serve some sort of greater narrative purpose. They 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 have like a little bit of underlying theme or like you're supposed to feel something. This. I felt just upset, upset that they just threw like a very serious thing into this film out of the like the most left of field, dude. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, man. It just also, also, oh my god, um, this movie has essentially two locations. It has Arkham and it has um the courtroom, and that is where you spend the, almost the entirety of it. And you really start to feel like this whole courtroom scenario is needless because you know he did it. They know he did it. <laughs> we watched him the do it. The jury knows he did it. They watched him do it. There's and the footage whole thing of him doing it. Superficial because, oh, I forgot to mention, because uh, this is a Joker movie and it's set in Gotham, they have Harvey Dent in this. Oh, um, and, as you know, whenever Harvey Dent is in a courtroom, something very bad happens to his face. And so they two face him at the end. That's fun. They but blew the, whole that time, Har the whole time Harvey's just asking questions like, did he do it? Yeah. Okay. Is the Joker, is he the Joker? Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. And that's it. That is every single fucking time 
but he goes to the goddamn witness stand. It's it's every fucking time. And also, I haven't even <laughs> mentioned the worst goddamn part of this. So, in universe, they made a Joker TV movie, right? Oh yeah. They they repeatedly reference it. They're like, I they made a TV movie about me. They did it. Me, Arthur Fleck. I got a TV movie made about me. <laughs> they made a like CW show about him every every time. <laughs> now. Lifetime movie. The, 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 the film is repeatedly talked treatment. about as how it inspired people, like kind of like incel esque people, right? And how everyone loved it, and this, that, and the third. And they bring it up so much that you start to get the vibe that this is Todd Phillips patting himself on the back and sucking his own dick for making the Joker sequel. It is it is over and over again, just blatantly him being like. Them being like, they made a TV movie about the Joker. I saw it. Everyone saw it. It's the hottest new goss in town. Everyone knows about the Joker too. Oh, the Joker. Oh yeah, we saw the Joker movie. Also, they call him just Joker, not the Joker, and it feels really weird. Because and, hear me and, out. Because mm -hmm. we know that this is not the fucking Joker. This is some bullshit. Some oh, bullshit is getting jammed. Yeah, he's getting, he's getting to it. My bad. Let, him, let him get mad. Let him get mad. My him, bad. I'm sorry. Let him work up to it. So, intro. Matt is right. This is not the Joker because at the very end, right at the very end, when this trial happens, right, a bomb explodes right as they announce that he's guilty, and it blows the ha the, the the wall of the courthouse out. A lot of people are dead. Harvey's, you know, got his whole thing going on as is tradition. Right. And Arthur walks out into the rubble in his full Joker like regalia. And he gets in a car by, with this guy who's like dressed as like a one to one of him and this other dude who are like fans of the Joker. And while they're stuck in traffic, he freaks out and he starts running. Right. And he's, I guess, supposed to be disgusted by what he's created as being the Joker or some shit. I don't know. But. He goes to the stairs where uh, he had first seen uh, himself do the, the little dance in the first one where he's like, uh, yeah, you know, like the rooms to go dance, whatever the fuck. And <laughs> rooms to go dance is crazy. And 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 when he goes up to the stairs, you see uh, Lee, who's there, um, who's like crying. And it's like, you're not the Joker anymore. I don't like you because I want I want the Joker, and you're not the Joker because the Joker wouldn't be a little bitch. And she Arthur starts you know, being like, "Please just talk to me," and she starts singing, and he's like, "Stop singing! I want to talk to you." And I guess it would have emotional resonance, you know, if I cared about any of these fuckers. But anyway, he gets arrested, he gets sent back to Arkham, and while he's there, he's just like, "Man, my life is bad." <laughs> so the guards come up to him. They're like, "Hey." Arthur, you have a visitor. So he goes out in the hallway, and this, this, this is where the audacity, the audacity reaches an all-time fucking high. There's a guy in the movie who you see maybe two other times before this. In total, maybe has 45 seconds to a minute and a half of screen time. Tops. And he's like a weird little dude. He's like, he's just like looks at Arthur the whole movie and he's just like <laughs> <laughs> laughing. And I was just like, please, please don't. Please don't do this. Don't. You're better than this. Please, Todd. Don't do it. And while he's in the hallway, he's like, hey, you're the Joker. And he's like, no one's called me that in a long time. And he's like, well, I used to watch you on TV. Can I tell you a joke? It's like, yeah. He's like, okay. What do you get the guy who used to be your role model? You get him what he fucking deserves. And then he stabs him a bunch of times in the stomach. And while he's falling down, dying, he starts like singing. Meanwhile, out of focus in the background, that guy starts laughing maniacally and cuts a smile onto his face. And it's the Joker. That's cinema. Yeah. That's it. I'm about Is to this watch for it. real. I'm gonna watch this not, movie three times. You dead ass. It's I'm not it's watching like, it. It's it it has the it has the dramatic resonance of when Will Smith says, What are we? Some kind of suicide squad. That's how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> like it it feels it feels ham fisted. I'm it not feels watching lazy. This. The entire film is slow, it's pretentious, 
It just goes in circles over and over again because every line of dialogue is the same. Literally every conversation between Arthur and his lawyer is, you need to say that the Joker was another guy. Can you do that? He's like, I could, but I think I am the Joker. And then he's like, but I'm not the Joker. And then Harley comes in and he's like, no, I am the Joker. And she's like, but we need to say you're insane. And he's like, okay. And then, oh, also, I didn't even mention, for some reason, during the courtroom scenes, they let him defend himself. And because he fires his lawyer in the middle of the trial. And because, I guess, he's acting as his own counsel, the judge is like, you're legally allowed to dress however you want. So I guess it's just a lazy excuse for him to be in, like, full Joker makeup and stuff in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And while he's up there, he does a foghorn leghorn impression. I says, no, I said, boy, I said. No, he's like, he's like, Mr. Puddles. You know, no. Little, 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 little. <laughs> now, you would say I'm the Joker. But am I really the Joker, baby? Or am I truly not the Joker? He's like, you killed a man. And he's like, bro, trying to do his semantics. best. His best he, does, <laughs> he does the Jason like, Sudeikis. Southern Cajun yeah. judge voice. Uh, that's this shit. He's trying to do his, his best Gambit insane. impression. I'm going to watch it, this movie it, four it times. It feels like I the have fat to watch from the B I movie, dude. See. I might be he locked like in that. on Sunday. No, it's not. I really can't find a single redeeming quality in this film. Jambalaya. It feels like three hours, and it should, because it's just a slog to get through. And it's one of the first musicals I've seen that I genuinely hate. And I did, like, five years of musical theater. This is ass. I just... I just Googled the actor who plays the inmate who stabs Arthur. He could mm -hmm. do a good Joker. I don't know what his acting capabilities are, but he looks like he could play a good Joker. What's his the name? problem is, why Connor the fuck story? Is, why do they let Todd Phillips do this? Why do they? He yeah, wanted to make bro. a fucking taxi driver rip off. Fine, they let him make it. And I was like, no, no, but he's not the real Joker. This is the real Joker. Dude, this is the real Joker. If, I've said this before. If you want to make a meditation on like mental illness and how it affects people. Why do you need it put why do you need to put it through this like lens of the Joker? Mm -hmm. That's so because lazy. He wouldn't have got money for it. So he yeah, needs yeah. sweet, sweet IP. But yeah. also apparently this is what happens when you can't rip this, off another fucking Scorsese movie. This is kind of just like shit. Scott Phillips's thing, dude. Like apparently Bro, he's just you know, you know what, shit what, you know you know what's also crazy to me? They had Brendan Gleeson in there, and like, that's a waste of of a, a talented actor. I thought I smooth thought during the trailers, I smooth thought he was gonna be Harvey Bullock, the detective that's in like mm -hmm. every fucking thing. Um, but mm -hmm. he's apparently some guard at Arkham. I'm like, what is this shit, bro? Just some guy. What is going on? He's just some dude, just a guy. He ain't nobody. This is so crazy. I'm not excited for this film. But that ending, I might be a little excited for the film. Maybe a little bit. I'm just, I'm it's just more like surprised. a morbid curiosity for me. Like, I want to yeah. watch just to see how dog shit it is. Like, I'm mad about having to watch my like train wreck. Just because I hate myself, I'm going to watch it. But this, I want to watch just because, like, I hate Todd Phillips. I don't like the first Joker movie. I think it's mm. a fucking ble like bland ass fucking remake of shit that mm -hmm. we've seen before. We've seen it done better. I hate Joaquin Phoenix. I want to see how dog <laughs> shit he is in this, and I want to see his career fucking derailed and burn and crash and die. Fuck He's that guy. You, you just don't get... you. It, it's weird because like the first one makes you feel bad for the Joker, but at a Not certain me. point, when you're watching this, one, you don't see... <laughs> I said, I you, don't, to you don't see suffer more. Joker. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like, like the Joker or a Joker at all. It just feels like some fucking sad man wears clown makeup. It doesn't That's feel it's like there's any real character. Yeah, and also, oh my god, I almost forgot, dude. There, okay, so there's a point where <laughs> you seeing when the Saints come marching in and he starts a riot at Arkham, and while oh he, when god, he does it, no, they they're in the cafeteria, right? Anti-black, and he starts and he starts <laughs> singing when the Saints go marching in. And they tell him to stop, and he does it. And then I Spartacus would. style, the other inmates join in, because I guess they're all really big fans of Joker. And the then everybody starts doing it. Dick and then Rider. he starts... And then this is, this is like the most like like self-filating part of this film, 
where it's Todd Phillips once again sucking his own dick for making the first one, where he gets on the table and while they're all screaming and doing the same thing, marching and he starts doing the fucking uh, and he's like doing this dance too, like it's just bogus. his little Joker thing, his little yeah, his little his little like fucking stupid Joker dance, like it's just it's just not good. It's just it's just not good. From start to finish, there's like two enjoyable musical numbers. Honestly, Joaquin Phoenix does like a mediocre job at singing, even though he's not classically trained. But none of the musical numbers are really that engaging. As a whole, I got to give this film like a two. Valid, because that's probably what I'm going to give it, or worse. I need to. Yeah, I need just, to as someone who, as someone who only likes musicals when they're good, this this doesn't sound like a fun time for me. I would recommend watching like the footage of Hamilton or Wicked or Heather's or literally any other musical after this, just to cleanse your palate. Yeah, or sandwich it. Do like tick tick boom, Joker two, and then Heather's. You know, just like sandwich it in between there, so you get something good. Because this is just abysmal. No, I want to go watch people juice now. I have to, I have to re, I have to re revise my rating for Megalopolis because more I think about it, this one might just be slightly better than than Megalopolis. And Megalopolis you better like not fucking zero. put Megalopolis up, bro. No, it's worse. Oh. I put it okay. back down. Remember, I said it was gonna be a two or like a one because of the cast, but I'm like, I'm gonna go straight zero, bro. Yeah, Joker is oh, a one. Joker's a one to me, and I haven't seen it yet, so. <laughs> That, going that's in with how I knew. great expectations. So shout out Madam right. Web. I'm sorry. I owe y'all an apology. I said y'all are the worst film of the year. I didn't realize we're getting two packs of ass coming back to back to me in October. So it turns out y'all are not the worst film of the year. Joker is the second worst film of the year. And uh goddamn mega flopolis is the worst film. Of the year, possibly of all time, it might be up there. I, the if I were to say we'll my that. top three worst this year, Megalopolis, Borderlands, Joker two. Yeah, even Harold is better than than Joker two. I didn't even finish Harold. I don't consider that a movie. <laughs> a Vine, a TikTok. That's a that's a that's a Disney that's Channel a quibi, original. That's that a Quibi, bro. A Quibi. That shit's a Quibi. That's a Quibi ass film. Not gonna lie, I would if I saw <laughs> Harold in the Purple Crayon presented on Tubi or Quibi, I'd be like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> That's where it belongs. What like, with this with this last bit of time we have, let's talk about one good thing that came out this week. Let's let's switch it up, all right? Because we were saying movies are good, movies are bad, you know, but not everything's so black and white. And speaking of things that are black and white, penguins. Let's talk about the penguin. Can we yeah, talk about the penguin? Uh, about the penguin okay, yeah, I'm, I'm down. Haven't seen please, the episode please. yet because of uh, re- we, for reasons. We've seen all three. For reasons, we've seen all three in this household. My uh, my, my, my I've vehicle. Seen, I've seen all three. My vehicle might be a little, you know, out of commission, so I didn't get to watch Penguin because I was busy dealing with the insurance. But I did <laughs> watch true. Agatha. <laughs> and yeah, we don't talk about that bullshit. I didn't watch. And, no one watched that. Bullshit. And CTE. I stopped show. watching that. Nah, but dude. let's yeah, let's talk about penguin real quick. Let's Don't, talk no, about the no, first two. No no vague, vague on the third one, but we'll talk about the first two. First one was a banger, bro. Mm-hmm. One one hour and seventeen minute premiere for a season, and it it was it felt like a good it felt like a movie, bro. And then mind you, you know I, I'm pretty sure everyone on this chat has love for Matt Reeves the Batman. I remember like Luis and I. Uh, we, I remember I saw it like four times the week it came out. And like Luis and I didn't, Gerardo, were you there too? I don't know. I we saw it in there. spring. I know Luis I was and I watching watched it. it. I was watching it. But, but you I, was, I was doing my own thing. Oh, I was so invited. It's Miles Morales. I was um, not invited. Time, it's all good, bro. We got you next time on the Batman 2. Two Bat, two Man. Um, but no, we went, and saw, we went and saw it in spring. And I was like, bro, this movie, I've seen it so many, I've seen it so many times the first week. It's so fucking good. And then I found out that that they're doing the Penguin Show, a spinoff of this. I was already locked in. I was rocking with um with Colin Farrell as the Penguin. So once this show dropped, I was like, I know I gotta I gotta catch it. The only reason I didn't catch this week's episode is because of reasons, you know. Mm. But Personal. but the last two episodes, bro, bro, they are cooking with gas with grease. And like, let's talk about how, um, you know, the storyline's progressing right now. It's everyone's They're calling it the, with lard in this bitch, man, bro. I'm Listen, telling you, I when I heard about the the penguin uh, 
spinoff. I, I I wasn't excited. I was like, uh, do we need it? I was like, I was like, this, yes. this feels this feels unnecessary. But when I when I heard when I realized that Matt Reeves was gonna be like directly involved, and I remembered, I was like, that's fucking Colin Farrell. That's Oscar winner Colin Farrell right there. I Go. said, okay, we I said we got something. We got something. And I think I think it's I think calling it uh the I think calling the it sopranos. the Sopranos in in it's a, it's a, in DC fair. that's a disservice. That's a disservice. Mm-hmm. I love the Sopranos, but I think this is its own thing. I think it's a lot. I don't want to say it's better because you know, but I'm like this. They're fucking cooking. It's its own thing, and I love it. I love it. I love everyone involved. I love uh, the Hangman. I love Victor Goofy ass. I love. I love the Penguin. I love the story that they're making. I love. I love all the different families and shit. I. Just, I, I want to I, see more. I can't wait to see more. I, I honestly oh. have not seen a show in so long, especially a live action one, where I genuinely like every character and every performance in it. Everyone is acting their asses off. Like, I, I, I just really cannot... Like, one main thing I have to point out, especially in the first episode, is the makeup job on Colin Farrell. Dog. Is Fucking mm-hmm. uncanny. Mm-hmm. There's a scene in the first episode where they torture him, where they have a garage, like a like a wire tied <laughs> under his arm. He's like completely shirtless, and they're trying to torture him to get secrets. That's the out. second episode. Yeah, and, oh, that's the second episode. I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 bro. So they they're essentially trying to like you know get get secrets out of him and whatnot, and they're torturing him in order to do so. And they have like this like prosthetic, like gross, hairy old and fat man body <laughs> that is so well put together. I I genuinely was like, did Colin Farrell get fat? Like what happened? Like Yeah, like, you I, think like, I'm like, just, did he do the did he do the Christian Bale myth? It looks really fucking good. It looks it really good. Amazing. This is gonna win it. This is gonna win an award for best makeup. It has to. Oh, for Trust sure. me. It has it to. It needs to. If it doesn't. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the fucking bears gonna win or some bullshit. Also, also the the the, the the Sopranos comparison is really funny considering Christina Milioti is actually also in Sopranos. Christina, <laughs> bro. and you know Which what? I, you know what? She's she, she low key is the heavy hitter of this show. Like, so for those of you who know about you know Batman and the supporting the endless supporting his cast of gallery, villains gallery. And, and, and and yeah, his Rose Gallery. I think it's um in was it Long Halloween that she shows yeah, up with, right? Uh, yeah, and she's like she's stuff. she's yeah. she's beefy, Whoa, she's scary. She she's like bro jacked. This is a dainty little girl. You wouldn't think she's any type of threat. She is the most mm-hmm. cun- like the most calculating, most cunning. She's frightening, and that's just that's solely off of Kristen's performance alone. And I, that is I how you that. do a fucking role. Mm-hmm. You know they could have led with the whole she's this terrorizing, imposing six eight Amazonian woman. Who can throw you and bench press you because you're a little bitch boy? Nah, they went with this most unassuming, Please. T- tiny, like yeah, helpless, soft woman, and she is terrifying. She's a it's, it's a different kind that, of terrifying. Yeah, she she mm-hmm. she shows Menacing. with her. She has like a physicality, not through like her actual like physical build. But like her demeanor, like the way mm-hmm. that she moves, the way that she conducts herself. Because at first I was like. Wait a minute. She's playing Sophia Falcone. That's the, the hangman. The hangman's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't mm-hmm. understand, right? I don't believe this person could really be, like, a serial killer, right? And then in the Whoa. second episode, where she just point-blank executes a child, like, with, with all coldness <laughs> in her <laughs> eyes. Nigga. She's like, so essentially they have, they like like the scene we were saying earlier where they got the garrote under his arm, they have... Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the kids that saw Oz leaving the nightclub the day that uh, steal his car. Falco- that uh, Roberto best. Falcone was shot, right? That he was killed. And one of the kids that was trying to steal his car is like, no, this, no, he was there. He's lying to you. And Oz is like, no, I, I've never seen this fucking kid before. He's fucking lying. And Sophia's like, are you sure? Because I will shoot this kid. And he's like, I don't know this kid. I've never seen him a day in my goddamn life. She's like, okay. And then it booms him right there. Cold, palace, uh, not a single goddamn fuck given, and and the whole rest of the show, she just has like this calming, 
blatant rage behind her eyes to where you're just like, I don't, I need an adult. I don't feel safe <laughs> right now. And I love that. I love that. She's just, you me. oh, she, you know, you know what she reminds me of now that I think about it? When you first find Gus in Breaking Bad, mm. that's the kind of thing she has. You, you're seeing this nice, sweet chicken shop manager, right? Doesn't really look too physically imposing, but they are a monster. <laughs> that is Kristen Milioti, and she is great. Also, uh, shouts out to Renzi Feliz. I think I might be butchering that. But yes. He is Vic, he is Victor. Vic. Love Vic. I, I Vic, hope they protect Vic right. with everything uh, in him. That's what I was talking about. I, was like, I need no, 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 no. He's protect he's Vic. Gonna we really love him. He's gonna, he's gonna live. He's gonna he's, live. He's gonna make I, it. I don't think so. I believe I it. I, we I want to believe. Shout it. out Vic. This is a he's Vic too sweet approved for, this, for that fucking world, man. Whenever, whenever he said wow. lay down on the dead bodies in that like second episode, it's like don't do I that. I thought they were doing it. I thought they were doing it. I got that. I thought he was just gonna boom him. I, I really do kind of like, like I, I think it is kind of fucked up. Like it is a rather abusive, uh, somewhat relationship between uh, oh, Vic and I. For sure, yeah. It is one thousand percent like the healthy. most negative father figure he could have. It's very much not healthy. But it really comes across with this, like these small, endearing, tough, loved kind of moments that he's trying to impart. Because you see, Oz is not only like trying to fix his own life, you know, this late in the game, rise into the criminal underworld, but he sees a little bit of himself in Vic to a degree. So he's trying to like give him that like tough, firm, guiding hand, so he has a better life than he had. And it's 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 sad and it's twisted in a way, but it's it's very well put together. It's it's a very nice dynamic. I like it. And bro, I like it a lot. Since we're talking Episode about three is gonna know, make you sad though. We're yeah. talking about good actors and, and good performances. Let's talk about the resounding goat himself, the undisputed legend across all forms of media, Clancy fucking Brown. Oh Bro. my god, he's literally in here like in bits and pieces. And it's mm. like, what the fuck? Like, y'all are underused like utilizing my goat. Remember he's when he was coming, in, the, in Gen V? When he's in Gen V as Brink, I was like, Y'all wasted that man, bro. That mm -hmm. that that is a phenomenal actor who should be like he they, they just sprinkle it's him in Mr. like parts. I want bro. him in there the whole shit. Yes, he is Mr. Mr. <laughs> that's Eugene. That's, that's Eugene Krabs. I heard me oh money. God. That's crazy. You know funny. You know what I just realized too? He's Mr. Krabs, but he was plankton in this show, if you think about it. I'm trying to get the formula for the bliss. He's so goofy ass up. I think we got him. We got him started with the cartoons. He's he's mute him. What they say, yeah. mute them, done, <laughs> silenced. I'm playing, but well, nah, he's great in this. He's yeah, really yeah, good man. as, as Moroni. I, I and really, like, I really like him. It's just all around. This is how you do television. I'm very, very, very hopeful for the rest of the DC TV and everything going on. I know this is not. Part of the main DCU that we're getting, which, which makes I'm me still, mad. I I'm still excited, bro. I'm still excited, and I know they said they're going to focus on the Elseworlds stories too, and let them kind of grow in their own, you know, their own realm. Please keep doing this, David. David, mm -hmm. our resident knower of no of all things Hollywood, of all um, things known, said, all things known. He had a good point. He said they should keep this going. They should make a second the Batman movie, make it a trilogy. Actually, make a third ba the Batman. Give us like two limited series and um just keep just kind of keep this going, keep like another TV show, keep that universe because it's so rich, dude. And everyone's like grounded Batman doesn't work. Grant Batman has to be fantastical. You can have a fantastical Batman with all the, the mystical shit and the characters that do all the weird, like clay face and shit. You can have that, but the 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 problem that they're gonna face is that people are gonna compare this is the dark knight all over again. People are going to compare everything from from 2022 on to the Batman because Matt I Reeves mean, did not miss on this film. So, and the Penguin is just yeah. a continuation of that. So it's hard to follow it up. And like I'm looking at all the news from from the DCU about you know the Green Lantern show coming out. They cast all the cast Kyle Chandler, Aaron Pierre, all these people going to be in the Green. I'm like, bro, listen, listen, bro, listen. You got You're competing with something that's already going to be so established by the time this comes out. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're gonna they're gonna match up with that, you know. And I'll, honestly, when the when the DC uh, U comes out, I'm gonna be very saddened because that will be around the end 
of Matt Reeves' time with Gotham and the whole world and everything. And that's going to be a really disappointing thing to see. But I feel like that finale is going to be incredible. Whatever, whatever he does to really close the chapter on his segment of DC adaptation, I'm, I'm excited to see. Truly, there's so there's so much you can do. He can make like a small extra season of Penguin with the Red Hood gang or, or even Black Mask. Like there's so many great facets of street level villains in uh, Gotham's underworld that I really think we're honestly just scratching the surface of. Like, mm-hmm. uh, for instance, uh, Bliss is a very prominent drug within the Batman mythos and within yeah. Gotham. And I'm very, very excited to see what they do with it. I also found it interesting. Um, the doctor who they have working on the uh, on the Bliss, like the actual extract, his mm-hmm. name is Dr. Bloom. And I was like, oh, Carl, is that who I think it is? I was like, is that, is Mr. that who I think it is? Is that Mr. Mr. Bloom? Is that Mr. Bloom? Because if so, that ain't who that's, I think upsetting. It is. that's upsetting. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, I know who that character is also. I know who he is. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Do you really know who he is? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, Mr. Bloom is, is like this very upsetting fucking spindly goddamn fucking like Slenderman. Slenderman looking motherfucker with like a a like a like a, like a, like a, like a potato skin a potato sack mask with just a flower on it. And he has the power to like God, I don't I'm not entirely sure what is oh yeah. Oh yeah! So oh, I actually do know said, him. I just didn't remember. Yeah, he can he can grow. Oh fuck! He that's him. Alter his body. Yes. He's like he's like he's like he's like Miss Marvel. What the uh, like in the comics? What the way he can like in big in certain parts of his body or like change his limbs or like his bone density? And he is just he is fucking hot. He's fucking terrifying. Do I now? Slenderman, I'm gonna be honest. Or movie to put Miss, They're probably not gonna put him in here because this is very grounded. But I, yeah. it was a nice little nod if that is the bloom that I'm thinking it is. I don't think I don't think they're gonna make him that fantastical, obviously, because it's such yeah. a grounded universe. But I don't think that I think he can be just as terrifying just as he is, especially considering you know what he's making. I think he can be a terrifying presence, and that's something that I about this like Matt Reeves mm-hmm. universe. I, I think they can be just as scary. They can be just as imposing within there, within that, within those boundaries, you know? I agree. Yeah. Oh, also, I, I forgot to mention, you know, um, like, I forgot, I forgot about, her name. I, I'm probably mispronouncing this. Uh, oh, go ahead, Matt. I was just saying the great thing about having a grounded universe, you can still pull the fantastical characters in it and do your own spin on it. And people will, you know, people will be a little bit more forgiving too. Because you know, with the with with going bar for bar, word for word, fantastical characters, people are expecting certain things, certain elements. Like for example, Mister Freeze, you know, you're expecting that comic suit and everything. Yeah. But if you do like a grounded version of that, you're like, okay, this guy's got like some cryo lab that he was in an accident, whatever type of shit they'll do. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, th- there's people are a little bit more understanding of that. That's supposed to be grounded. Like, I don't know, Bane from from The Dark Knight Rises. You just a big swole British dude on fucking like hate, fucking gas. I hate that. I hate that. He's no, on no, steroids. He's that shit. Oh, you know what I mean? Uh, but you know what I mean? Like he's not. Yeah, you know, I know like the venom. He can't you know be mean? just yeah. as menacing. Still, he was, was obviously he was, he was obviously like, a what? huge threat to uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman. I think it's it, it can work within that universe, and I think that should have been Mexican. That's like the comedy. Oh, Mexican. also, uh, really? last iteration I would say is really incredible. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Is La Raza, uh, bro. La Raza. Is uh oh yeah, show I'm Max I'm trying to uh show Ray uh as as um Maroni's wife. Mm. Is that I don't know her name. Is that the lady who keeps speaking Farsi? Because I don't know her yeah. in the comics, but I think she's really fucking cool. Yes, yes. Uh Maroni's oh, yeah. wife isn't really like a major player in the comics, it's not really that like that important. But it's I really find it interesting that a woman who I mainly know as like a voice actor in Overwatch. Mm-hmm. Is doing that's this. and that is that who that is? Is that why that's Anna? Voice? Anna, the one with the one with the rifle. That's her. Yeah. That's her. Yeah. That's the moment. Okay, guys, I'm coming out. I used to play Overwatch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, we got I, him. Really fun. We got him. I really currently fun. play it. I I redownloaded it recently. I feel very ashamed of myself. <laughs> uh, I don't have the money to buy Overwatch too, and they shut me out. But. Yeah. All in all, oh my god, I wish we could talk about the third episode, but we're short on time and Matt hasn't seen it. 
So all you need to know, Matt, is good. They cooked that man. They cooked. They, they cooked. cooked that man. They cooked. And I think in this episode, especially, they show just how how quickly things can fall apart. I think that's oh, how we we'll leave it. Real. It's, really uh, like that. it's really good. Um, I like that. But show me that. You know what? You know what? You know what I like though. I like outros. We've we reached another fantastic episode of the. Before before we do that, before we do that, like we said earlier, this is our one hundredth episode. We finally Whoa! reached episode one hundred. Uh, you know, we've had some little. We probably would have reached it earlier this year. Um, we've had some breaks here and there. You know, we had the strikes from the 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 uh, the strikes of last. Was it last? That was last year. I keep thinking yeah, it's it this year. year. That was last year's strikes. Yeah. Um, the actor strike, actors guild strike, writers guild strike, everything that went on. We've had different, like you know, we had to take some breaks here and there just for our own mental trying to get stuff together. But we made it to our 100th episode today, and it's just really impressive to see how far we've come. We've done so much um, in the last now almost two years. Next month we'll have reached our two year mark of this podcast being a, a, a thing, and you know we've we've added some some great folks onto the team, um, some folks who actually contribute to to the greatness of this podcast and we love having them on here. Uh, it's just great seeing us grow and grow as a channel and just keep getting better and better with each week. And we couldn't do that without not just our team here, but all our, our folks who listen and watch this show. So thank you for being a part of this journey. Uh, we're excited to see where we go past episode 100. We're going to keep going. We ain't, we ain't stopping this because it's the 100th episode. We got episode 101 coming next week. Not sure what we're talking about yet. Probably some cool shit. Probably going to be a good episode as usual. Uh, but this big shout out to everybody involved. Shout out to to Luis, Gerardo, Graham, AZ, and David, just being a part of this journey, uh, making one of the greatest shows of all time. And then shout out to, like I said, every viewer, every listener at home, whether you're listening on Spotify, watching on YouTube, or if you're just tweeting us, whatever it may be, we appreciate y'all 100%. Keep on tuning in. Keep on sharing the, uh, the, the show with uh, your friends and family. Let us know what y'all want to hear, what y'all want to see. Let us know if there's anything we need to change. We like to we like to make some adjustments. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll be like, hey, we're doing some good shit. Don't mess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Maybe we'll be like, the people have spoken. We want to take it a little, take it up a level, whatever it may be. But we, like I said, we appreciate y'all so much. We couldn't do this without y'all. And with that being said, another episode is in the books. <laughs> Huge thanks to everyone who tuned in today. Keep the excitement going by following us on all platforms at Sinestro Corp. We got an epic lineup this year that you guys do not want to miss. Remember to smash that like and subscribe button to never miss a beat. Show us some love by leaving us a stellar five star review wherever you catch this podcast. Uh, spread the word about our podcast and YouTube channel far and wide. Share it with your friends, your family, your entire network. Y'all support means the absolute world to us. Go ahead and tap in with Backstage OL, our homies over there. They got big things coming. They've grown to another another market. They are expanding. I, I hope we can can work with them here soon and tap in with what they got going on because they got some great, great stuff. If you want to know all things Hollywood besides us, follow them, tap in with them and see what they got going on. Follow AZ at Tari Singo on all the, the, the channels, the YouTube, the Twitter, and the Instagram, and of course on Twitch, twitch.tv. I will Tari. upload a video this month by the grace of God. I will do it eventually. <laughs> It'll do happen. It. I don't know when, I'm but gonna, hopefully. I'm going to make them do it. I'm going to go. I'm literally, AZ, you don't even know. I'm on the way to your house right now, bro. We're going to make you make this video one way or another. I hope, You're doing it. I hope to God. It's so. happening. <laughs> it's happening. But with that being said, guys, we appreciate y'all. Until next time, y'all stay awesome, stay cool, stay breezy, beautiful, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Sinestro Core. Oh, we